Hi, I'm Susie. Did you know you can take dried flowers and inlay them in acrylic? Today I'm going to show you how to do that. Very cool. Let's get started. I gotta tell you, I've been sitting here pondering which color should I do this in? I've got the gold tones and nudes, then there's the burgundy-ish red kind of tones, then I've got all these beautiful mauves with the beautiful purple flowers, and of course, this autumn-y kind of orange which we're in now in Canada in autumn. So I really couldn't decide. We're gonna build out some coffin. So I'm gonna start that first and I'm gonna still kind of decide what we're doing. It. So I'm gonna form this. I'm gonna make them a nice long coffin. I think I'm gonna do the base in a cover pink. Now, a cover pink is just like an opaque pink. It means it has a little more color to it. I'm gonna put this here to keep my hand nice and steady for you. I'm gonna do the flower one first. Let's, let's do that right away, I'm really excited about it. So when I do a inlay, which inlay means you're putting any little piece, whether it can be cut up money, it can be little beads, it can be mylar, it could be glitter, it could be anything that you want inlay. And inlay means it's going in between some layers of acrylic. But first, I lay down a layer of acrylic to be able to put the inlay, in this case, flowers on top. Now, whenever I make a coffin, I generally do it more of a squarish nail to begin with. Now I won't go into some more details about liquid to powder. I do have a video on liquid to powder if you want to touch base on that. I'm going to do them quite long as I said. I just want to be able to get this down so I have something to lay the flowers on top of. When I'm doing this layer, it is quite thin. It literally is just a platform for your flower to sit on top of. I'm choosing the cover pink because I do want some substance to it. As far as underneath, it's like the background to my painting. I have a special mix. I, I blend a couple of pinks together. I don't know if you can see the difference in the tone. This being the more opaque pink, and this being a little bit more clearer. And the clearer one is now what I'm going to use for my nail plate. That's right near the cuticle area too. I just wanted a little more translucent just to create a very natural kind of look. And that's a special mixture I've put together of a couple of my favorite pinks to be able to make that really kind of translucent, bright kind of pink color. It's so pretty. Okay, do I dare go a little longer? You know, I think I'm going to because I really want to go outside of my comfort zone a little here. I'm going coffin, which I don't normally wear, and I'm going to go a little bit longer. Ooh, that's a lot a bit longer. So I'm creating that thin layer that I'm putting down to hold the flowers. Now I'm just going to check it this way to make sure it's nice and thin and it's all there. It's all there. Okay, here's where the fun part comes in. Now, something with these dried flowers, and if you can find them, it, to me it does add some specialness to it. I'm going to grab these ones in the purple-ish color. It'll still go with my burgundy because burgundy is very forgiving that way. And I don't know if you can see, I'm going to undo this. We're going to cut them up now to prepare. Can you see these tiny, tiny, these are actual dried flowers. And I'm going to actually use these and show you how I use them. It creates kind of a baby's breath look. I just love these. Now I may look like a crazy lady here, but I do have a method here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the tiny, tiny little flowers. I mean, these are super tiny. See that? They're like little buds and flowers that fell down there. Okay, that should be a good collection. Now you can see these flowers. I think I'm going to use both of those and I might put one of these in too because this creamy color gives a very old-fashioned 
way about it, right? I haven't decided on these reddish ones yet. I might put one in there. There's a darker one in there. I might steal that. So you know what? Let's just throw some on the table here so I can see them better. I do want this collection here though. Okay, here we go. We're gonna place flowers. Now how I do it is I get a little tiny bit of liquid, little tiny bit of powder, mix it together, and I, sometimes that's how I pick up my flower. And I literally roll it on, then I get some more liquid because I wanna saturate this flower so he sticks down. Then I'm gonna paint the leaves out. This, you have to be a little bit patient with this. Sometimes I'll do this, get a tiny little bead and put the acrylic underneath it a little, press it down and give it time to cure so that it holds the flower petal down. You just don't want it to be bumpy. We still have to clear cap this. So right now we're creating our design and then we're gonna seal it with the clear capping. That is beauty. Okay, I'm gonna get another little bead, pick up another flower. I think I like this. This looks really old fashioned, this guy. Except I like that size, so I'm gonna keep him right there. We get a little more liquid and just paint some liquid on it. And the weight of the liquid sometimes can hold the loop. See how it popped up? Oh, well, that one didn't this time. Oh yeah, it did. See how it pops up? The other side pops up like a teeter-totter. Seems happy now, it's sticking down. Okay, I'm gonna get another bead of acrylic. I'm gonna put him over here, I think. He's still popping up. I'm gonna get this one. Oh, that's a beautiful color. So I'm gonna try to hold that down with me brush. This one's gonna be stubborn because I'm actually curving it quite a bit. Again, my nails are kind of curvy this way, so I'm gonna have to really talk this one into it. I'm gonna put a little acrylic under there. And I'm just going to be patient and hold my brush down and wait for that product to cure a little and it'll hold that flower petal right in place. And I'm going to have to do the same on the opposite side. I'm just using my brush right now to hold it. Doesn't have a fighting chance. Okay, a little bit more acrylic. Look at how tiny that is. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to hold this side down. There's a stick in there. Let's see if I can just get that out. Could be attached to the flower. It's attached. I'm just gonna leave it, it's natural. Okay, it's happening. I think I'm gonna maybe do this little dark red one over here. I like him, he's very, very rich. That'll go beautiful with the burgundy. Oopsie. Hey, wait, did I like the other side better? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna get a bit of acrylic. The tiniest of beads. Stick it under there, actually. Actually, that's good. I like that side, too. Just holding them there long enough to convince them to stay. As the product dries, in about, you know, 15, 30 seconds, it starts to cure enough to hold it down. It's not completely dry, but it'll hold it. I am going to cut this little stem though, because I don't want it to stick out in my d final design. It's natural, but it's sticking out. Okay. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, but I do need a flower over here, but I really like this old fashioned tone. What is this one here? Ooh. This little darker one is really pretty. Okay, he went a little too far. So you may not have drawn the flowers, but you certainly are creating a picture here. That little petal came off, so I'm gonna slide it over here. You won't even notice. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Now, what does that picture need? I think it needs one more of these Maybe the lightish pinkish one. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put a little bit of acrylic right in there. That's really good. 
really pretty. I'm just saturating it with liquid. It's gonna be a little stubborn because it's really curvy over here, so I'm gonna flip it up underside. And I'm gonna stick that petal down and hold it until I convince it to stay. Puppy boat. Actually, that wasn't long at all, was it? It's really pretty. Okay. And those little guys that I cut off, I'm gonna pick them up with a super tiny bead once again and start finding places to put them. You can actually take a bead like this and paint the bead of acrylic on it because it's clear so it'll see through and pick up your little bits and place them on top. That works too. I'm gonna do that with a couple more because I kind of want the little bits to be floating, almost like floating around it. Sometimes there's just enough liquid. I'm just putting liquid on it now. Just holding it down with liquid. It's working good. I can't see that other side so much, so I'm gonna put something over there. Don't wanna forget it. Okay, so I've got my design, and now I'm going to clear cap it. And that's a big bead. I want a lot of liquid, a lot of powder to create a rather big bead and I'm going to encapsulate the entire design, hence making this an inlay. See that? It just encase the whole thing. That's why you don't wanna do this too thick. That means the first layer, because you have to do this clear capping over top. And you're talking about how to build a nail. This structure is crucially important to it not breaking. That's really great. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and coffin all the other ones. Okay, so I just finished filing these up and I did a combination between a hand file and my electric file. You can see the whole process of the filing in a video I did with Laura about making coffin nails and I go into the detail of shaping it. So now I'm gonna oil them up. So I'm gonna saturate the cuticles and the nail with oil. Get rid of all that dust. Then I'm gonna massage it in. Then I'm gonna wash them and we're gonna get ready for the burgundy polish. It's gonna make these flowers pop. Now we're ready for the polish. And I did select this Jessica line. This is a new line I found at my distributor. It's called Jessica Phenom. And it was the perfect old fashioned burgundy color that I'm looking for. Burgundy's really in right now. I've never used this polish. Let's see what it's like. That is a very rich color. I'm gonna paint the end too, because it's a darker color. take your time when you're doing a color like this, especially around the cuticles. That's where it really shows. Wow, that is stunning. Now I wanna get my shiny coat on those flowers. Look at those flowers come to life. goes quite nicely with that antique burgundy color. I always do two coats. The first one kind of soaks in a little bit. This one isn't as much, but it's really, goes on really good. Very good coverage. And it is soaking in a little. So the second coat keeps it really a full strength of color, true to the bottle, and uh, it, it leaves a shinier coat. It's also better for wear. You know, I never used to be a really big fan of burgundy, to be honest with you. Burgundy was popular in the 80s, so I'm kind of over it. But this is shedding new life. Just gorgeous. 
I'm glad I went longer too because sometimes when you paint them darker you lose a little bit of the look and the length it looks a little shorter when it's darker so I'm glad I went long so I can really get the elegance of a long coffin oh and I'll do a second coat on my beautiful old-fashioned flowers this wine burgundy is a really beautiful backdrop for that flower I can't wait to see the reveals on these. Let's check them out. Well, I love it. I'm off to teach a class tonight. My students are gonna love this. Better get the other hand on this. I'm gonna wear the other hand. I'm now in love with coffin, ballerina, whatever you wanna call it. Very pretty. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.